Hello, tarot lovers. Welcome to my channel, Tantra and Tarot with Kelly. Are you curious what's in store and love for you for July 2022? Well, let's see who's getting the fireworks. Today, we're going to be doing love readings for each sign for July. You may watch for your sun, moon, rising, or Venus. And I'd like to start off by wishing a happy, happy birthday to all Cancers. All right. Well, today we're going to start with Cancer. So please use this timestamps below if you would like to jump ahead to your sign. And I will be using the Osho Zen tarot deck for this reading, along with the Romans Angels Moonology deck and animal decks. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with Cancer. And today, Cancer, let's see what planets you have in your sign. Right now, we have um, the sun in Cancer, and we also have a black moon Lilith in Cancer. Pretty soon, though, ooh, got some cards jumping out. Let's see. Or, oh, Ace of, Ace of Cups already wanted to jump out for Cancer. So maybe feeling some new love, connecting with a water sign, which could be awesome. Also feeling that love for yourself and filling your cup first, which is always important when it comes to love. So yeah, you just have the sun in your sign right now. We just had that powerful new moon in Cancer. And um, then um, soon here, we're going to be having Mercury moving into Cancer and connecting with your sun. So that could be bringing a lot of positive um, communications as it pertains to your love life and your own personal life. All right, so I'm going to shuffle just a couple more times here, and then we're going to get started. We'll take a main energy, a past, a present, and a future, and we will see what we have in store for love for a cancer. All right, I'm going to cut the deck, bottom of the deck. When I cut, we have the eight of cups letting go. Um, so what's that say to me as we're beginning here? Um, well, what that says to me is that you may be going your own way right now just to find um, what it is that really soothes your soul. So it could be uh, that you're single and you're looking to connect to somebody new or you walked away from an old situation in order to find some new romance somewhere else. And that is what we're off in search for when we do have the eight of cups is that one cup to fulfill our wish for the nine of cups. All right. So I'm going to pull a romance angel as well. And then we'll get an animal spirit card. I think we're going to go with that one. And let's see here. Other planets that are affecting you right now. Um, we've got Pluto that's still uh, retrograde in your seventh house. So definitely learning more about relationships and how the transformation of those is going to be benefiting you. It could be sometimes a little bit of, of rocky, but at this point, um, Pluto has been in your seventh house for quite some time, so you may be getting used to it at the, <laughs> right now. <laughs> Either way, um, we did have that big um, Mars square Pluto, and that was square your sun and, and possible planets. And so they've been um, like a little explosive, <laughs> like my shirt said, um, but that's all for the greater benefit. So whatever did uh, perhaps crumble or what energy um, that had um occurred in that square it may you know may have brought out some um some fiery uh uh arguments or maybe even um some some powerful changes but we'll see what the cards say about what's coming up next okay so main energy i have for cancer oh is that um is that pluto energy we have the transformation card which is the death card so you could be connecting with the scorpio past energy we have the hierophant um, it says here, nothingness, uh, you may also be connecting with the Taurus current energy. Oh, wow. Awesome. Another Taurus energy, um, beautiful, uh, it says creativity. This is the Empress card. So, so far three major arcana. So definitely an interesting month for you. Wow. Love it. Future energy we have for cancer is the breakthrough card, which is the Libra card in cancer. So definitely some major energies here. Um, I am interested to see what other cards we have, and then we'll talk more about it. Oh, love it. The um, Moonology card I have here is Don't Let Your Past Hold You Back, South Node, which we just had that South Node sweeping through and um, having the eclipses in the Taurus and, and Scorpio. And so uh, those could still be affecting you, especially the one in Scorpio, because that is the South Node, which um, is trying your sign. So um, you may be in, in, in your fifth house. So you may be seeing some old lovers either return or leave or those ideas about the old love and things that you've learned in romance could be coming back around for you to be testing out. So that could be exciting. 
your romance angel is you deserve love. You are lovable. And our um, animal spirit card we have is the starfish. So let's talk a little bit about all of this. And I'll also look up the starfish to get a few more keywords. Either way, um, it looks like you're going through some changes this month with your main energy being the death card. Um, what kind of transformations you want in your love life are going to be really important as to this breakthrough that you're going to be having. So in the past, we may have just decided to commit to a higher way of being. We may have decided to say, okay, these morals and values that I have in my life are going to be the ones that I am choosing to follow. That way I have that um, just wonderful inner beauty that is shining here with the Empress card. We've got several cards here that are ruled by Venus, so it may be an exciting month in love for you. Either way, um, I see here that it could also uh, be a wedding. Um, definitely, anytime we have the Hierophant and the Justice card, this could be making commitments and also contracts. So see how those are working for you. Um, let's take a look at this starfish card. The starfish says, beautiful, alluring, superficial, or shallow. When in balance, uplifting, artistic, expressive, when out of balance, gossips, feels empty, bring into balance positive friends. So definitely working with those positive friends. The North Node is in your 11th house. So you may be meeting a lot of new friends right now, which could be exciting. Um, however, how am I seeing this work with all, all of these other cards? Well, you're definitely looking good these days because if you're, you have the um, Starfish card and we have the Empress card. So definitely beauty abounds and you, um, also could be connecting with somebody who is a mother. So those maternal instincts, they may be coming back around in your love life. You could be working on um, just your own family. However, I feel that there's going to be a lot of positive growth. You're going to be looking really good and you very much could be connecting with a Taurus, a Scorpio or a Libra at this time. So Definitely good luck with all of that. I think it's going to be an excellent month for love for cancer. And just know that these energies that have been squaring you are for your best good. So if you went through some changes lately, and if you're still going through some transformations right now, just hang in there because I really feel that there's going to be a lot of balance and love and beautiful energy coming your way since we actually have three cards here that are ruled by Venus. So that is lovely cancer. Also want to mention at the bottom of the deck, when I cut, we had the intensity card. So it could just be some fun dating right now and also bringing that passion and romance into your love life. Excellent. All right, Cancer. Next, we're going to be moving on to Leo. And Leo, let's talk a little bit about what's going on with you right now. Uh, Leo, we have Mars and Jupiter training you. Um, we have Mars and Jupiter that are in Aries right now. And so that could be a helpful energy just to be giving you that extra oomph and feeling like you want to expand and you're probably feeling like you want to do some traveling and get out there. And um, um, with those in your uh, ninth house, you may be meeting some people from different countries or uh, you may just be feeling like um, you just have a lot of energy to put into that expansive love life of yours at this time. All right, we're going to shuffle a couple of times here. Oops. A couple of cards wanted to pop out, but I'm going to put them back in because we got a little too many here. I did see the high priestess. So maybe there are some, um, some intuitive um, little secrets that may be coming out, or you may be feeling like um, you're just following your heart and seeing where it leads, going with the flow. All right, we're going to cut the deck. Bottom of the deck, when I cut for Leo, we have the rebirth card. This is the Ten of Swords. What's that say to me as I'm pulling these other cards out? Well, it may have been an ending or there may have been something that you discovered where you're just like, I can't do it like this anymore. I've done it like this in the past and in the past it brought me pain. And so now I'm at the point where I need a rebirth, where I need to be looking at things in a new and different way to not get hurt the way you did in the past. Um, unfortunately, you know, sometimes there is pain that we have to learn from in order to know what and where we are going in the future. So let's see here, let's pull a romance card for Leo. And then let me get a moonology card. So yeah, so you also still have Saturn retrograde in your seventh house right now. So what kind of lessons are you learning about love? Where have you had to put in that extra energy? 
um, definitely um, being committed to those things that are important to you and having to put in the effort is probably definitely the name of the game these days. So, all right, we're gonna do main energy, past, present, and future. Bottom of the deck, we have the judgment card. And how do I see that working? Because the judgment, we've got a double 10 here, 10, 10 for the, um, the card for judgment, which is 20. And so definitely getting to the end of some cycles. We have the 10 and then we have the judgment. How are you seeing things? Are there things coming back around and you're gonna have to decide whether or not they're for you this time? Um, main energy though, we have, wow, this came out for cancer. We have the death and transformation card um, and that is ruled by Scorpio. So you may be connecting with the Scorpio. We have the judgment and the um, and the death card. And so definitely um, looking kind of Scorpionic here. Um, past energy I have is the three of cups celebration. Present energy breakthrough Libra could be connecting with a Libra. Also in the future energy I have is the nine of wands exhaustion. So what moonology card do we have? We have fixed vision, hold your vision, fixed moon, excuse me. And then we have for your love card, unrequited love, unrequited love. There is not enough attraction or chemistry to keep this relationship going. Hmm. Also, we have the golden egg for your um, animal spirit card. So what does this all say to me, Leo? Well, it looks like there may have been some kind of an ending, um, definitely based on having this unrequited love card. So there, you may just be changing how you want to do love. Maybe there's somebody old coming back and you're like, no, it's just, it's not for me this time. Um, maybe you used to like them and this, the old feelings aren't quite there anymore. So what does that say? Fixed moon, hold to your vision. We have several fixed energies here. So, and you as well are a fixed energy. So definitely sticking to your guns, deciding what you want and sticking to the plan and seeing what happens when we stick to the plan for the long term, rather than just maybe um, bouncing around. It's like, okay, um, I definitely know what I don't want. I know where I want to go, but it may take some time. And what kind of breakthrough are you going to be having this month? Well, it looks like it could be a big one. So bringing balance back into your life, karma is going to come back around. Any of those negative things that may have happened are going to come into balance for you this month. It looks like you're having definitely a good time. These three women are dancing in the rain. So it could be spending some time outdoors, just enjoying life, going to some parties, having fun, like Leo always likes to do. And then what, what may that lead to? Well, there could just be a lot of stuff on your plate. Maybe there is a lot of opportunities for you, but perhaps you're going to be getting some work done, focusing on um, how not to burn out. So we don't want to burn out. We definitely want to change though in a way that's going to be good for the long run. So what is the energy telling you right now? Well, listen to your heart. Definitely. We've got the heart chakra card and that's going to say, listen to that unstruck sound on the inside and hear what it's telling you. Um, it may be telling you that it is time for a change. Um, maybe there were some things going on in the past, perhaps even a marriage that you are deciding it's time for a change. And so if that's the case, um, definitely using your wise judgment, it says here beyond illusion, there's a definite, um, idea of transformation. We've got the butterfly. We've got the transformation card. Things are just going to be changing, but it's all going to be for the better. It's definitely guided by the universe because we have several major arcana here. So, and what kind of unrequited love? Well, just pay attention to your heart right now. There's going to be some messages coming in and it may just tell you that things are time for a change and that's going to be okay because we don't want to burn out on the past and we want to stay positive looking forward to the future. Well, good luck with all that, Leo. It kind of sounds like a good time, but it may be a little challenging. Either way, I'm sure you will figure it out <laughs> by the end of the month. So who's up next? Next up, we have Virgo. Virgo, let's talk a little bit about what's going on with you right now. As I'm filming this, um, you do have the moon in your sign. So um, you may be feeling like you're just um, connecting more with your emotions, maybe wanting to spend a little time at home working on those projects of yours. We definitely, with the sun um, in cancer right now, that is a um, it's just more of a time to be at home and be with family and be doing those types of things that are um, going to be beneficial um, 
for your growth in, in, in the ways of nurturing others. So let's see what we have here. We're going to shuffle a couple more times. Let's talk about some of the other energies. Um, let's see here. Uh, you still have Neptune in your seventh house making its way. It's retrograde right now. So having that dreamy side to your love life, trying to decide, you know, which of your options you want to go with. If you feel there's a little confusion or maybe there's just a lot of fantasy going on, I would roll with it because that's definitely fun. And um, you have the support of Neptune in your seventh bottom of the deck. When I cut, I've got the postponement card, four of swords. What's that say to me? Maybe we're putting things on pause for right now. Perhaps we're taking a little bit of a rest. Bottom of the deck, four of wands. So we have two fours and we've been talking about that fourth house. Um, so definitely things around the home life, what's going to be important, celebrating, having fun with those that you love and taking it slow, maybe doing some meditation on what it is that you want in your love life. Let's pull up. I'm going to do this one. This moon card spoke to me. Yeah. So what else do we have for you, um, Virgo? Um, we have Uranus training you. So there could be some surprises coming up. We also have um, Pluto training you. So there's more of that transformation energy that's been showing up so far. Okay, so we've got a romance angel and let's take an animal spirit card. We're gonna take this one. Okay, so what have we got? Main energy we have is the creator, king of wands. You may be connecting with a fire sign. Past energy, nine of cups, current energy, four of pentacles, future energy is the knight of cups. Then our romance angel we have is full moon in Virgo. You are good enough. Oh, we're pulling your, whole, your card here. Full moon in Virgo. We have the moon in Virgo right now. So it's definitely speaking to you. And then we have the unrequited love card it says here there's not enough attraction or chemistry to keep this relationship going the animal spirit card i have here is the unicorn which is that um that sixth chakra your um third eye and we're going to be reading a little bit more about that as i'm read as i'm pulling this up let's talk about this king of wands here definitely the creative project starter so um you may be the one that's um uh, just the ruler right now in your world. You want to be, you want to be that fiery leader. You may be connecting with the Leo. There could be um, uh, positive opportunities coming up for you. You may be creating opportunities for others. Um, you possibly have had a wish come true here. We have this. Um, it says laziness here, but it's this guy just seems to be chilling. He almost looks like he's like a lifeguard at the pool or something like that. He's got his drink in his hand. He's sitting on the um, under the umbrella. Maybe you're enjoying some time by some water, enjoying um, a, just maybe you went on a little vacation and and you got a chance to relax and really get what you wanted. And now you have to maybe take the energy in a little bit. It says the miser four of pentacles. Maybe you don't really feel like spending much money right now. And that's okay. Perhaps you're building that savings account back up after enjoying yourself, perhaps after going on a nice trip. And where is that going to lead you? Well, you may be connecting with also a water sign, building some trust, going on some dates, sending some messages of love that are going to be fun and a little bit fearless here. This guy's like flying in the wind. He's feeling good. He got the wind on his back. However, you know, when I see some of these cards together, when I see unrequited love and I see um, you are good enough, um, you may be working a little bit with your self-confidence here. Um, knowing that you're good enough for love may make you decide that there's some things around you that just don't add up. It's like, uh, no, 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 I don't feel it. Okay. So if you don't feel it and you're holding that, that's good because there could be somebody new coming in in the future. It could be a water sign coming in for you but I would definitely be following that intuition. Let's read a little bit about this unicorn card. Reconnecting to higher wisdom or divinity. Is it difficult to see or hear or think of a unicorn without immediately questioning if it's real? Did they ever exist? Perhaps long, long ago. The mind answers maybe, or it could be, or no way. This very contemplation explains our relationships with divinity. So really looking within, following your intuition, knowing where you're going to go, pointing that 
that horn here in the direction of where you want. And I think that it's time to perhaps have a little party at home, a little celebration, bringing people back into your home life and really enjoying that creativity and that fun, fiery spirit, because here you are, you're the leader this month and whatever it is that you would like, go ahead and manifest that world. All right. Sounds great, Virgo. Okay, so next up we have Libra. Libra, let's talk a little bit about um, what's going on with you as well. In um, in the planets right now, we don't have any um, planets in your sign. We do have a few planets in your seventh house. However, um, we've got Aries and Jupiter making their way. So it could be some expansive energy. You may be feeling like you just have, I don't know, um, a lot more um, just uh, fiery uh, positivity and, and, and you want to expand your world and you feel like you're, you're meeting new people. You're going out there. You're, you're, you have Jupiter in your seventh house. So it could just be a lot of, a lot of action for your love life. Um, maybe some good sexual connections with that Mars energy there and some, um, some, some fun fiery opportunities. So I'm going to cut the deck for Libra cutting the deck. Mm, bottom of the deck. When I cut, I've got totality five of wands, perhaps a little jealousy going on there. Maybe some competition, Maybe you have um, a couple of options right now and you're playing against each other just to um, keep things interesting and um, bottom of the deck. Oh, I love it. Bottom of the deck going with the flow, ace of cups. So that self-love is always important to bring around somebody that loves you. The law of attraction says, yeah, the, the more you honor yourself, the more people are going to honor you as well. So um, the more you love yourself, the more that brings love to you. So let's see here. We're going to get a romance angel, romance angel. There we are. Law of attraction, attraction. You attract romantic love by enjoying this moment, moment fully. And we're going to get a moonology card and a animal spirit card for Libra. So yeah, so you still have, oh, this one jumped out for you. We've got the gazelle. You still have Saturn um, trining your sign. So that could be a, a positive implications of, you know, you're putting your energy, you're putting your effort out there, you're being uh, dedicated um, and you're putting in the hard work and that could be working harmoniously for you right now, which is excellent. Um, and um, let's see if there's anything, anything else that um, is affecting you at this time. Well, you have Mercury and Venus that are, tr that are trining your sign in Gemini. So we're definitely um, still working with those love energies, still getting good communication going on. And um, definitely when we have those trines, you know that things are going to be a little bit more harmonious for you. So got to love that. Our moonology card that we have is new moon in cancer. Your hard work is paying off main energy. Oh, I love it. Two of cups, friendly list. Look at those. Those trees are like growing together there. Past energy guidance, three of pentacles, current energy, seven of wands, stress, future energy, nine of wands, exhaustion. So what's this say to me? Well, I think you could be connecting with, uh, um, could be anyone right now, really, um, could be a Capricorn. We also have earth water and fire here. So, um, I feel like whoever you're connecting with now is definitely going to be more of a soulmate type. If you don't have a soulmate type, I would look forward to this month to be bringing that connection to you. I know that Libras definitely like to find themselves on the other. You're, you're, you rule the seventh house. So that partnership is extremely important to you. And it looks like you've got a strong one coming in this month. Absolutely. So maybe be seeing some fireworks for yourself this month. And um, once your cup is filled, you filled your cup, you've got the ace of cups, you definitely have something to give to the other person. However, if we have some jealousy going on, it seemed like with that, with that five of wands, or maybe some um, petty arguments or some little battles, um, definitely just continue to stand your ground, do what it is that um, you need to do for yourself. Perhaps there's a, multiple things going on. This guy's like juggling and dancing on a ball at the same time, either way. Standing your ground, defending what it is that's important to you, 
um, is going to be important in working as a team, being a good team player this month, trying to determine, say, you and your partner are, are, are working on a project together and you need to bring in a third person to help you complete that. That could be um, how the story goes this month. Or um, maybe you're getting out in the community and you're and you're working with others, but definitely sticking to who you are, um, being your um you know, your cardinal self and saying, okay, this is the way it's going to go because it looks like there could be a lot on your plate, maybe a lot of opportunities. It says exhaustion. Perhaps you just need some extra rest. Um, either way, if that's the case, um, I think it's still going to be a really nice month for you. This gazelle card um, speaks of having grace and relationships. So let's read a little bit more about the gazelle. Um, and we will see what it says here. Gazelle, heightened awareness and ability, vulnerable. When in balance, graceful, perceptive, artistic, when out of balance, food allergies, insomnia, racing mind, bring into balance, yin yoga, a cozy home, good food. So yeah, if this just, you've kind of been maybe uh, really busy, maybe you've been traveling, doing a lot of stuff, this month, we're going to just be bringing it in, focusing on those one-on-one -on -one relationships and being aware of what's going on in such a way that we can still have that beauty and grace amongst perhaps some stress on the side. All right, but keep keep doing that hard work. The Capricorn says your hard work is paying off. So if there is a lot on your plate right now, I think you're going to be just A-OK -okay towards the end of the month. All right. Awesome, Libra. Great reading for Libra. Next up, we have Scorpio. So Scorpio, I know you've definitely been feeling uh, the changes in, in your world because you've had the eclipses in your first house and in your seventh house. And so that may be bringing in new lovers. It may be bringing in um, past situations or uh, just things that um, are important to you. Like you're working on you, you're number one. And then how does that fit with relationships? Well, some of them may have to change or go away, or you may have some fresh ones coming in. So let's shuffle a few. Yeah, those nodes, um, you know, those are guiding you where um, your your soul path is, is headed at this time. So it's definitely really powerful when you have those eclipses energies. I just uh, dropped a card on the floor. So I'm going to pick that up real quick. Bottom of the deck when I cut, I have the four of pentacles. So maybe just um, saving your money, saving your energy, uh, waiting for um, just better timing, perhaps. All right. Main energy, past, present, future. Bottom of the deck, I've got aloneness. That's the... Uh, Virgo card. That's uh, so you could be connecting with a Virgo. That's our hermit energy. So you may be just spending a little bit more time alone, contemplating, looking within for the answers, trying to find that spiritual connection. Let's see here. I'm going to talk about some of these as I pull some more. Um, main energy in your reading we've got is um, playfulness, which is the page of wands. Past energy, eight of wands, traveling, current energy, king of swords, control, um, future energy, four of cups, turning in. So let's talk about some of those. I'm going to pull you a romance angel. We're going to go with this one. Reconciliation. Someone from your past is returning to your life. Moonology card I have for Scorpio is... A new romantic cycle begins, new moon in Libra, and animal spirit card. Let's go with this one, elephant. Ooh, I really like the elephant for you. It's like working with the root chakra to break through um, any barriers that could be in your way right now. You may feel like um, that you're stuck between a rock and a hard place, and you have to break through the barriers. Like. Um, use your, use your wisdom, use your third eye and really determine, um, from the root up, which Scorpio is excellent at that. You rule the root chakra. So the elephant rules the gateway to the root chakra. So working with that energy of 
of really deciding, you know, what makes you feel stable and what doesn't and breaking apart the things that don't make you feel stable. So you can, um, move forward. They say, if there is a, as if there's a boulder in your way, it's there for a reason so that you can either learn how to work with it or move around it. So whatever that may, whatever may may be going on for you, that could be um, the way to go. Either way at the top, let's see who you could be connecting with here. I definitely see that you could be connecting with an air sign. We've got the king of swords here. You may also be connecting um, with a, with a fun fiery uh, type. We've got the page of, of fire and, um, either way, or possibly a, a or a Libra or a Virgo, but it looks like you've had a lot of communication. Um, maybe you went on a trip. There may be a lot of um, of messages going around right now. You could be talking to somebody new and either you know reflecting on on the on the good time that you had or, or planning for new travels or there's travels going on this month. So that fast moving fun energy is always excellent. Um, however, it may be that. You're just having to be a little bit more of a critical thinker this month when it comes to love, perhaps um, being a little bit more high and dry, not quite the um, open, uh, watery side of yourself. It could be more of just this analytical side of yourself, working with somebody that may be um, just a little bit more stiff or not <laughs> in the right way. And uh, maybe that means that um, you're doing communication, but it's not necessarily as romantic. It's it's more of like... Um, well, this is how it has to be. And we need to think about these things. So if that's how it's going, I, I feel like you're definitely going to be using your, your higher wisdom here to um, pull in some answers. And in the meantime, um, go out there and, and, and have some fun. Um, definitely get that, get that flirty um, energy out there. Um, continue to be uh, in that playful mindset, even though perhaps in your in your heart, you're feeling uh, just maybe a little cut off or a little bit uh, not quite so, not quite so, um, um, I don't know, maybe not really ready to go with the flow. You need to be a little bit more um, logical about it. So, all right. And then in the future, we have the four of cups. It says turning in. So there may be some opportunities that you just say no to. Like, ah, I'm not really in the mood. Maybe we're just kind of flirting and talking and texting. But overall, I kind of just want to stay to myself this month. And either way, um, if somebody new is coming back, it's since someone from your past is returning to your love life, you may have to make a decision as to whether or not you want that new fresh start with them. Do you want a new relationship with them? Or is it something you need to think about for a little while? But either way, using your higher judgment is going to be important and um, coming from the root up. Um, let's read more about this elephant energy here, which is definitely um, like cardinal. Um, it's It says unstoppable, auspicious, wise. The elephant is arguably, arguably the most auspicious figure in the deck. Like Ganesh, the elephant represents immense wisdom as well as good fortune. It's said that the great elephant is the destroyer of obstacles. So if this card appears when you feel stuck, rest assured the path will soon become clear. When in balance, one-pointed focus, generous loving. When out of balance, misunderstands fate, bring into balance trust. So definitely trust the information that's coming in right now. Definitely trust it. Take a moment, pause, figure it out, spend some time alone, and then you can go back out there and determine which relationships are going to be best for you this month. All right. Excellent, Scorpio. Next up, we have Sagittarius. So, Sag, let's talk a little bit about what's going on with you. Um, we just had the, um, the sun move out of your seventh house, so you may have been um, just feeling like uh, relationships were were easy and fun and now we have things moving into your eighth house and so um you may just be um, a little bit more introspective right now when i was uh shuffling the deck the eight of uh pentacles come out um so it says ordinariness so just kind of the daily life doing the daily life and in your daily life and um, who comes out to play? I mean, who is there for you just kind of in the everyday? Sometimes those are the people that you have the strongest relationships with, those that you work with, those who you see at their work, or perhaps um, you're doing some work on things together. Bottom of the deck when I cut, love to see this friendliness. This is the two of cups. And even those relationships that may not be romantic, 
um, that are still important to you. Um, uh, friends of the opposite sex, those who maybe you'd like to date, perhaps you're just um, friends at this time. Bottom of the deck, we've got the intensity card. That's definitely your card, Sag. That's that fun, flirty dating energy. We ha- This is the um, the knight of, of wands. So yeah, it says intensity. Maybe you just want to go out. You want to have fun. You don't want to be worrying too much about the seriousness of stuff. Oh, this one jumped right out. Um, animal spirit card we have is the fish. Main energy, and as I'm grabbing the other ones, is um, six of swords, the burden. This is um, going into more peaceful waters. Um, perhaps you've had some jealousy, you've had some anger, or there's been some arguments in the past, and now you're you're feeling more at peace. Um, things have resolved, and, and and whatever was heavy before may be lightening up a little bit because you've determined how to move forward in more of a harmonious way. All right, past energy, two of wands, possibilities, main energy, nothingness. This is the Hierophant cards, blank. Future energy, all three of swords, isolation. It's hard to see. This guy's like sad. He's sitting here crying, almost like in ice. Mm, There we go. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And let's see how our romance angel we have is let your friends help you. Ask for and accept support from others. Oh, beautiful. Moonology card, new moon, a new start is coming. So how do I feel all this is working for your love life for you this month, Sagittarius? Well, it looks like you're going to have some peace of mind, which is great. So regardless of what's going on um, with this pain that may be coming in the future, perhaps we're healing some areas of our life where we've decided that, okay, um, there was some conflict before I I've had some heavy I, things on my heart. I don't want to be in that conflict anymore, but I still have to, um, to move through these emotions that may, um, not be pleasant. And, um, that's kind of like that Chiron working with you. And um, we have Chiron in Aries, which is trining your planets. And so you do have to move through the pain to get this new start. Um, nothingness says to me that you've decided what you are and aren't going to do, what you're going to commit to and, and, and the things that um, are your values, your higher values and morals, that those are just going to be um, more important to you now than they were in the past. And by doing that, you may have to break off some relationships that just aren't bringing you that joy. And so in committing to yourself that you want the peace, um, um, maybe it is going to be more just like those friendly relationships, like we mentioned um, in the beginning when we saw the two of cups that it's going to be the friendships that are more important to you this month, not necessarily um, these um, romantic love relationships. However, it may be more of a new beginning for you, which I love. So let's take a look at this fish energy. Fish says that sometimes we can have slippery relationships. Perhaps maybe somebody was there for a little while and then they're leaving, or maybe they're coming back. But um, Focusing on um, the energy of the moon as well can be very helpful for for you. Okay, so this definitely sounds a little bit like Sagittarius. Restlessness, change of focus, lost in the current. Now, I honestly think Sagittarius feels lost in the current as much as maybe restless. I definitely feel that restlessness right now. When in balance, adaptable, travels well. When out of balance, distracted, changes mind often bring into balance, set a small goal and accomplish it. So yeah, if you're feeling a little distracted, you're trying to decide um, where to go, it says possibilities. There may be just a few options for you at this time, but maybe you aren't wanting to make a decision yet. You're standing in the doorway saying, okay, what's going to be more peaceful than me? What's going to be in alignment with my higher values? And at the same time, if anything else, I'm just going to go out and have some fun with my friends. Okay, well, good luck with that new start. I feel like this new um, moon that we had in Sagittarius is going to be a positive one for you. And if that's happening in your eighth house, then it may be that we are going through a larger transformation right now. And there could be some releases that may bring you a few tears. But at the end of the day, it's all going to be for that healing moment. All right. Excellent, Sagittarius. 
let's see who we have next. Next up, we've got Capricorn. So I'm gonna put all these back together for you, Cap. And we are going to reshuffle. Capricorn, you've just had this Pluto hanging out, still hanging out, going retrograde now in your chart. Um, so yeah, so that death and transformation is probably still working for you. Um, we're going to have some um, more planets moving into Cancer. So right now you have the sun in your seventh house and that may be illuminating some things um, in your relationships. Maybe you're um, learning a bit about um, just some just some positivity, maybe it's just some lighter um, friendships or some more um, just some more openings um, in your in your relationships that you've been perhaps waiting for and take out romance angel. And then you have. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that may be um, mainly affecting Capricorn. Um, we have uh, Uranus and Taurus, so that's trying. You may still have some surprises coming up in your world. Um, so if there is some abrupt changes, some lightning strike moments, some tower moments, just you know, going with those and, and, and seeing where um, the changes are happening and working with those, being a little bit more dynamic perhaps and not having as much of a plan and just seeing what comes up. So let's see, we're gonna cut the deck for Capricorn, bottom of the deck when I cut, I've got the ace of um, swords here, consciousness, we've got the Buddha on the front, using that Buddha consciousness, being very aware of your desires and, and what may be pulling you um, from the present moment. However, um, it looks like there's a lot of thinking going on. So you may be feeling like um, you have clarity now, perhaps there is more clarity. Um, you have some answers, you know that the confusion may be ending. We're gonna take a moon card. And let's see what we have for Capricorn. All right, Cap, main energy we have for you. Oh, I love it. This seems to be coming out quite a bit. Main energy we have for you is two of cups, friendliness. Past energy we have is um, the knight of cups, understanding. Present energy, eight of cups, letting go. Future energy, awareness. This is the uh, cancer card. So. You may be connecting with a cancer. You could also be connecting with a water sign. Um, we've got all water elements down here. We've got, yeah, we've got a cancer. We've got two of cups. We've got the uh, knight of cups and eight of cups letting go. So it may just feel more emotional for you this month. You may have to say to yourself, okay, um, I've been a little bit in my head. We've got this mind card. You may also be connecting with an air sign. What is it that you've been thinking about so much this month? What is it that's going to be bringing you um, happiness this month? Well, even though we have the two of cups, relationships may be bringing you happiness, but also spending some time alone, having to let go of things that maybe didn't go the way you wanted them to. You're walking away from a relationship that isn't exactly um, the one that uh, you want right now. Maybe you need to do a little bit more um, self-searching at this time. And if you're connecting with the cancer, likely um, you're getting your head and your heart on the same page at this time. And what, what's that going to do for you? Well, it's going to help you move things forward. If you've been feeling stuck and then you have to have this awareness about, about where your head is at, where your heart is at, merging them together so that the dark and the light work harmoniously to move you forward. And what's excellent about that is, um, we also have um, this North Node card for you. It says, step out of your comfort zone, North Node. So the North Node right now is in Taurus and that is in your fifth house. And so what that may be doing for you is giving you some new relationships and some new opportunities. You just need to be open to them, being open to them. So maybe the past relationship just isn't really there for you right now. And so you're going on your own to try to find a new connection, um, perhaps somebody that's more of your soulmate type, especially if you're connecting with a cancer, since that's in your seventh house. Right now, we also have for your um, animal spirit card, we have this one. So that does talk a little bit more about some of the um, alone time that you're going to be having. It says here on your uh, romance angel, it's safe for you to love, open your heart and we get, give the highest energy of all. 
so yeah, so that's beautiful. So let's let's talk a little bit more about this swan. The swan is a water element, and the swan um, does like to have that alone time to do some writing and some meditation and to, um, let's see, it says effortless creativity, sensitive, mystic, elegant power. When in balance, infinite creative power. When out of balance, agitated, sniffy, lacking vision, bring into balance, solo time writing. Yeah, so if you have a lot on your mind, this guy looks like, I mean, he's just got a lot on his mind. If you have a lot on your mind, as it pertains to relationships, doing some meditation, slowing it down, being aware of what it is that is going to be um, bringing you that happiness and also just um, and having some positive love messages. If anything else, just say something nice, right? <laughs> At the end of the day. So that's what I have for you, Capricorn. Just remember that it is safe for you to love. So if you're feeling a little bit blocked, um, there will be some safer situations in which you can express that love. All right. Sounds good. Going with it. <laughs> Next up, um, we have Aquarius. So Aquarius, let's see what's going on with you. Let's see what planets are working in your houses right now. You uh, have Saturn still in your sign retrograde working with um, just some bigger changes in your life. You're having to dedicate yourself more to the hard work. Um, there could be some authority that you are dealing with at this time that is for your higher good for the long run. Um, however, sometimes in the short run, it feels like hard work, but in the long run, those edits are going to be for, um, for your benefit. So let's do some shuffling. Um, we also have if we have anything else going on in air right now. Oh yeah, we've got Mercury and Venus that are trying your sign. Let's cut the deck for Aquarius. Bottom of the deck when I cut, there's that kind of Aquarian energy. We have the mind card. That's the knight of, of air, the knight of swords. Could be a lot of um, just fast moving conversations, Thoughts, talking, fascinating messages. Bottom of the deck, when I caught, I've got the three of wands experiencing. You may feel like your ships are finally coming in. Perhaps you've made some plans. You've had some opportunities and those opportunities are now being um, presented to you. So that's always nice when you've put your, you put your heart energy out there. You've kind of decided, okay, this is where I want to go. This is what I want. And now it's finally coming to pass. And so that's definitely positive. We're going to pull a moon card. Let's pull an animal spirit card. It wants to be this one. And then we're going to pull a romance angel. We're going to go with this one right here. Okay. Main energy on the tarot. We have five of cups clinging to the past. Past energy for Aquarius. We've got four of wands participation. Present energy, seven of swords, politics, future energy. Four of Swords postponement. The romance angel I have is give your relationship a chance. Work on your partnership. I've got the golden egg, the heart chakra card for your animal from your animal spirit card. And then I have it's time to release negativity, full moon in Scorpio for your moon card. So when do we have that full moon in Scorpio? The full moon in Scorpio, um, uh, was in, let's see here, um, was in the, uh, eclipse that we had. Um, so yeah. What did you release during that eclipse cycle in, um, in April, uh, in May, did, what type of fears were you able to let go of? Was it fear of relationship? Was it fear of commitment? Have you been, um, more of this independent thinker and now you're trying to release, um, things so that you can commit more to your relationships. You can be more present for them. Um, unfortunately, with this five of cups, you may have been focusing on what you lost um, rather than what it is that you still have. Looking at five cups, if three of them have spilled and two of them are left, 
then sometimes we tend to focus on the glass half full rather, uh, or the glass half empty rather than the glass half full. So that's up to you how you wanna see it. If maybe you've had an argument with somebody or there is a falling out, you could sit there and think to yourself, oh, you know, it's, it's not gonna get any better. Look at what I've lost. Or you could look at the two cups that are still full and say, we still have an opportunity to make changes to make it better. So with the four of wands in the past, you may have been enjoying some time at home with family and friends. Perhaps you, there was some celebration going on, maybe a little bit of a party that you had here. Um, that must have been uh, really enjoyable. Um, or maybe this is still coming up here in July. However, um, you may have to be a little strategic with those of those, those people that you are working with. Um, it looks like this guy kind of has one ma a mask and there's like a snake here. So um, maybe interested in, in, in the honesty of those around you. Um, who can you trust and what it is, um, who it is that you can trust. Um, you know, it could be a Scorpio right now. It could be a water sign. Um, we've got some air signs. There's nothing really standing out. Um, so it could be working with yourself more, how to be more strategic or just to be, how to be more yourself so you don't have that fear coming around that says, maybe I can't trust somebody. In the future though, we have postponement. We have um, the four of, of swords. So we're just doing some meditation, taking a pause. Um, perhaps this month isn't gonna be quite as um, active for you with love, but more of an introspective month in which um, you're working with yourself more. But either way, putting that effort into your heart chakra, putting that effort into your relationships, really listening to what your heart's having to say. And if your partner, if you aren't trusting them right now, or maybe something happened, maybe there was some kind of an argument, I would definitely think about it before making some action. Definitely put things on pause before overreacting for sure. All right. <laughs> Thanks for that, Aquarius. Next, we're going to be moving on to Pisces. All right, Pisces. So you've just come off of an exciting time having a lot of energy in your um, first house, but Jupiter has now moved on to your second house and the um, planets right now, right now we have um, just the moon, which um, moves every two and a half days um, in your seventh house. But either way, you may be spending some time at home connecting with your family. The Cancer Sun always, you know, it trines you. So that's a beautiful energy when we have some of these, these watery uh, uh, signs being illuminated for you. So having now uh, in your fifth house, the sun could just be bringing in some, just some positive relationships. You're just having a little bit more fun. Things seem lighter. Have you gone through some bigger transformations? Let's see here. Oh, okay. I'm going to shuffle these a few more times. All right. So yeah, so let's see what's coming up for Pisces for love. Hopefully we'll get some fireworks for you too. All right. I'm going to cut the deck. Bottom of the deck when I cut, I've got... Oh, I've got the Ace of um, Swords. It did also, I also saw the Eight of Pentacles, so, or the Eight of Wands, I'm sorry. Um, so you may have some clarity now. There may have been some communication coming in. Maybe you did some traveling. You have some answers now. Maybe you did, did some moving around. There's been um, a lot, maybe more, um, maybe spending more time in the car or uh, making plans. So bottom of the deck when I cut, I have the nine of swords. I've got the sorrow card. So you perhaps have been a little stuck in your head and we need to um, not focus so much on the negative stuff. Um, try to have a um, positive outlook for what's coming up, even though you may be having some concerns, some worries. Uh, main energy I have for you though, is the is the emperor card. So you could be connecting with an Aries, could be connecting with a fiery leader, past energy, two of swords, present energy, three of pentacles, future energy, page of pentacles, adventure. Let's take a moonology card for Pisces. We've got, it's time to breathe out, disseminating moon. Let's take a romance angel. We're going to go with this one. Soulmate. I love it. 
yes, this is your soulmate. So whoever you're connecting with, it may just feel like they're mirroring back to you your own heart. It could feel just more natural at this time. Like it's not as much of a struggle. Uh, or you could just be right at the beginning of something new. We've got the earthworm card here. That's like the, um, the beginner. So perhaps you're beginning a new relationship with a soulmate type and you're just starting to come into um, these feelings of, of love that are new for you. Either way, um, however that's working for you, I feel like you're going to be the one in charge. I feel like this is going to be, you're going to kind of be adding some more structure to your love life now. Um, you likely have made a big decision. There may have been two ways that you could have gone, and now you've decided which way that's going to go for you. And so um, the schizophrenia, you may not feel like you're trapped in between um, two different sides right now. We've got this person that's like suspended in the, in the middle of two, two worlds, perhaps. So if you feel like that right now, I would look and see who you can work with. We've got the guidance card, who you can work with to help make a, um, a good decision so that you know where you're headed. There's um, page of pentacles. There'll be some, some offers, some small offers, maybe going on a date. You could be um, connecting with an earth sign or connecting more with children right now. So however that works, um, I would definitely work on staying in that positive mindset, trying to, um, not be so um, sad about that, which you can't control things that are out of your, out of your hands. So definitely focusing on that, which you can control. The Ember definitely knows how to control things. So it's also says the rebel. So doing things in your own way is going to be important. Take time to breathe out, disseminating moon. It feels like an exhale this month. It doesn't necessarily feel as, um, intense perhaps as it has in the last few months. So let's take a little bit more, um, more look at this earthworm card. All right. It says shy, hesitant, reluctant to share inner visions. You may be keeping some things in, which definitely is Piscean. So when in balance, earnest, intelligent, valuable, when out of balance, self-conscious, apprehensive, Bring into balance, speak up, risk, embarrassment. So yeah, you could just be at the beginning of some new worlds for yourself. And that could bring in some challenges of feeling like you just don't know yet. I'm here. It's like my first day on the job. It's my first day in this kind of relationship. Um, I'm here to learn. So definitely a learning month. Um, I feel like, especially with the page of pentacles, perhaps you're embarking on just some new studies. And maybe that is where you're going to meet a new lover, perhaps. So, all right, Pisces. Great. Love it for Pisces. Next up, we've got Aries. So I'm going to put these back. We're going to reshuffle for Aries. Let's talk a little about the planets that are in your house, Aries. Um, we've got Mars and Jupiter. So definitely feeling expansive, feeling like um, you may be a little warlike, which is your nature. I mean, you are ruled by Mars. So having Mars in your home sign could be nice. We still also have Chiron. And um, so you're, you're working through those larger um, pain cycles. You're, you're going through, uh, through the wound to the other side. Um, and as you're doing this for yourself, as this is happening in your first house, how is that going to benefit re your relationships? Well, with less pain is definitely going to have more joy. So, um, and that um, Jupiter may be just bringing you some good luck and fortune right now. All right, so let's cut the deck for Aries. Bottom of the deck, when I cut, I've got the moon card, past lives. Who is it uh, in your past that may be coming back? What are those, um, those dreamy elements that, what's below the surface? Um, there may be feeling like you've known somebody before and, you may have just met them, but they may feel like a, like a soulmate in a way where you're like, well, I feel like I've met this person in my past and now they're here. And so that could be exciting. And um, bottom of the deck, when I caught, I've got the queen of, of cups. So you could be connecting with a water sign female. Main energy. Oh, here you are right in your reading. Speaking of, we've got um, main energy for Aries is the emperor card, the rebel. So definitely being in your element, like 
I said, having Mars in the home sign, it's finishing up here. So definitely take advantage of, of, of still having your planet in your home sign. Past energy, three of pentacles. This has definitely been coming um, around. Who's you, who are you working with now? Um, what kind of teamwork is helping you advance and also building your team as the leader? Who's going to be on that team this month for you? And how are you going to be working with them in your love life? Oh, I'll, you're going to be working with them fairly well, it looks like, because you got the Ace of Cups. It could feel like new love this month. Also, definitely could still be connecting with that water sign because we also have the Nine of Cups. So I really like the way this is starting to turn out for you here. Um, uh, in the future here in July, you may be getting that wish that you wanted. Perhaps you set your heart on something and now it's coming true. Gotta love that, um, Aries. That's Jupiter expanding, helping you to um, get those wishes that you want. Um, we have a mutable moon. Nothing is yet set in stone. So um, sometimes that's a good thing if you aren't really getting exactly what you want yet because life is still shifting. Things are still shifting. Okay, we're going to take an ooh, animal card. It's definitely that one. Um, ooh, love it. It's the uh, crown chakra card. I can see it from here. We've got the cosmic egg. So definitely connecting with your seventh chakra. What is um, the universe telling you right now? You open your seventh chakra and we can close the root chakra and breathe in. We can get um, guidance, guidance from the universe about this new start for yourself in love, which is excellent, Aries, because this means that you, that Chiron is working for you in a way that you've worked through your pain more now. So now you feel like you're more open to love. Let's take a romance angel for Aries. We've got release your ex. Still doing some healing. And let's take a moon card. Moon card for Aries. Oh, we already have it. We have nothing is yet set in stone, but maybe we're supposed to pick more than one here because I've grabbed two. Adjustments are required. Third quarter moon. And let's talk more about how this is going to culminate for you in July. Well, anything in the past that is no longer serving, definitely let it go. Let it go. We had that Mars square. Um, Pluto, you may have had to let things go. Things may have just come to a conclusion and now you're moving on. And there may have been some, maybe a little bit of a battle. It may have been an internal thing, but either way, now you have a deeper sense of love for yourself. You're connecting, you're being more um, receptive. It's not like a really easy energy for Aries is to be more receptive because you are this fiery leader, but sometimes you put so much out, we got to kind of see what comes in. And in that pause, you're waiting, you're seeing what's coming in. I think it's going to be very lovely for you, Aries. And if you have to make some adjustments, just know that not everything is set in stone yet. So um, we're still, we're still coming up with the bigger picture right now. And that's going to be information that's coming to you straight through the crown chakra. So be paying attention to the messages that the universe is sending you right at this moment. All right, excellent Aries. Next up, um, we have Taurus. So Taurus, you've definitely been experiencing some major changes as well. We've talked about this, um, talked about the fact that you've had um, the eclipses in your first and seventh house. And so those relationships, those relationships to yourself and to others are definitely being highlighted right now. There's going to be a lot of important lessons surrounding where it is that you're going. And here in the October timeframe, we are going to have um, a bit more of that eclipse energy. So you're going to be learning more. If you don't have the full story right now, you gonna be learning more about where that's going here in a few months here in the fall. Um, we're definitely going to have a dynamic um, October. So Stay tuned for that. If um, you're wondering where things are headed, uh, bottom of the deck when I cut for Taurus is the six of cups, the dream, um, connecting with children, connecting with family, connecting with soulmates, um, thinking about memories of the past and, and, and positive things. But it says the dream. So um, you really should be starting to feel like you're living more of your dream now. 
um, things are shifting in, 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 in ways that are very beneficial for you with that North Node. So continue to walk the path, continue to do the better thing, continue to live that higher um, goal that you have for yourself. So bottom of the deck, we've got the King of Cups healing. Could be connecting with a water sign male, could be connecting with a Cancer, Scorpio or Pisces. Main energy, we have Eight of Pentacles, Past energy, eight of wands, current energy, three of swords, isolation, future energy, king of wands. So could be definitely connecting with either a, a fire sign or a water sign at this time. Let's um, get a moonology card for Taurus. We're going to go with this one. Conclusions are within reach. Full moon eclipse. Wow, we just talked about the eclipses. And um, let's see, we have a romance angel, soulmate. Yes, this is your soulmate. So that's six of cups connecting with somebody that you may feel like they are just like family to you. They are your mirror. Um, also, it could be more of a Gemini relationship where you see yourself and the other person. Grabbing one animal spirit card you have here is the crow. Oh, I love it. The crow has not come out yet. And it's definitely more of a spiritual element. Let's talk a bit about the crow first, and then we will um, get into some of these other cards. The crow is an air element, and it says spiritually strong, creative, watchful. So it says when in balance, psychic, strong, clear, when out of balance, ungrouted, hypersensitive, bring into practice, bring into balance daily meditation practice. So it says the crow has long been a symbol of magic. A crow personality is drawn to the supernatural and has a gift for seeing the unseen, knowing the unknown. And it said, if the crow holds within its mind's eye, the three realities, past, present, and future. So you may, if you see blackbirds flying around, it could be more of that symbol of how, um, God and the universe are going to be working for you at this time, bringing those changes, whatever endings are coming are definitely um, divinely guided. This is the way your life has is supposed to change right now. So if that's bringing in a, a new a soulmate for you, somebody that you're like, they just, it just feels like somebody I've known in the past. Maybe you still just met them and you feel like you can definitely connect with them. Well, how did you perhaps meet them? Maybe Maybe you went on a trip. Um, we got traveling here. Maybe you're still going on a trip this month. I think that there could be a lot of communications coming in. These are like the rods of love. We're going to be talking. We're going to be moving things forward. Um, unfortunately, that may mean that we're moving through some pain. We've got the isolation card here, three of swords. Um, there may have been a three-party situation. There may have also been um, just some heartache that you're having to reflect on right now and heal but it looks like you're going to be putting in the work. We've got ordinariness. This is the eight of pentacles. Um, this is just doing the daily life, doing the daily work, getting better at it every day. Taurus, definitely good at that. You're such a hard worker. You're so good with, um, you know, having a plan and sticking to it. So sticking to your plan that may bring in a, you know, a fiery uh, leader into your life. This could be you feeling um, after you've worked through the pain that now you're back at it again. Now you're ready to get out there. You're ready to meet somebody. You're either that, or you have the energy now to put into your relationships, using some more creativity, using the ability to help others heal through um, controlling your emotions, but also um, connecting with them as well. So we aren't going to be like freaking out. We're going to be um, calmly connecting with our emotions, using that energy to be a, a positive um, leader and to bring, um, just um, some, some new um, creativity. And I feel like if things have been sad, we're going to switch it up by being a little bit more creative. Okay. So I think um, that's about it for, for Taurus, but I, I do want to say, you know, definitely keep your eyes out for any of those blackbirds that may be um, flying into your world right now. They could be giving you a special message. All right. Excellent. Well, Last but not least, we do have Gemini. So let's take a look at what's going on with Gemini right now. Gemini, um, you have the sun now. It's moved into your second house. Um, your ruling planet of Mercury is still in your sign right now. So a lot of good communication coming in likely. Um, also with Venus, um, maybe that you know has been really good for your love life, having um, 
uh, Venus right there in your first house, connecting with your planets. Um, things may just feel like money is going well and, and you're more connected to your heart chakra and you've had opportunities to uh, communicate how you feel. So all of that is lovely, Gemini. All right, I'm going to cut the deck. Bottom of the deck, when I cut for Gemini, we've got the three of pentacles. This one's been showing up a lot. Who's on your team? Who are you working with? How are you using um, the people in your community to, to grow and to change? Bottom of the deck, nine of wands, exhaustion. May have had a lot on your plate. Could be working through um, having been really busy lately. Um, let's take a moon card for Gemini. Moon card we have, nothing is yet set in stone. Mutable the moon. So things are still in flux right now. And um, Gemini, you're mutable. So you work well with that energy of maybe we just don't have all the answers right now. We're waiting to see how things turn out. Either way, you deserve love. You are lovable. Um, that Venus energy, just allowing it to, um, to be a part of, of, your, of your daily world right now, feeling um, more beautiful. It could be connecting with a Sagittarius. I always think it when I get this card because of the archer. Could also, you know, could, could be connecting with another fire element um, with that exhaustion card that is a fire card. I'm going to go with this one. Ooh, I love it. The hummingbird. We'll read a little bit more about that. Main energy we have for Gemini. Eight of cups, letting go. Past energy, adventure, page of pentacles. Current energy, six of um, swords, the burden. Future energy we have is the king of swords, control. So definitely could be connecting with an air sign as well. Um, this could be you in the reading. Maybe you're just feeling a little bit more high and dry. Maybe you have to be a little bit more logical. Perhaps you've closed some things off. Hopefully you aren't being cold to anyone, but if that's what it takes, I guess that's what it takes. Um, either way, um, Eight of Cups says to me that you're kind of doing more of an independent thing right now. You're letting go of anything that may have brought you sadness. You're on more of an independent journey. Perhaps being single right now is more important to you than being in a relationship, either that or focusing on your own personal needs rather than that of your partner, which there's nothing wrong with that as long as you're doing a good job communicating, which Gemini usually always does, what it is that you're walking away from if you're walking away from somebody in specific. Um, but past energy, though, we have adventure, page of pentacles, there may have been some small offers on the table, going on a little date, um, making a little bit of money, connecting with children. Um, and that's fun. Maybe you're, you're going on a small trip. Um, we've got the six of swords here. We're moving away from negativity. Um, perhaps that trip is going to bring you some positivity. You're going to be um, uh, feeling like um, it's just more smooth sailing this month, which is excellent. And in order to keep things sailing smooth, maybe you do need to be more logical. You need to be um, more like this guy who's going to use his sword and cut off that, which doesn't serve. And that's OK. Um, uh, either way, you may also be connecting with an air sign now. So um, let's take a look at this hummingbird card. Let's find out a little bit more information of what's going on with the hummingbird. So this is an air element, which, you know, the air elements do definitely represent the heart. All right. So hummingbird. So I'm here somewhere. Give me just a second. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Hummingbird. Here we are. Hummingbird. Positive, enthusiastic, spiritually resourceful. When in balance, smart. Curious, loves to learn, sounds just like a gem. When out of balance, pushy, insistent, sharp, bring into balance, take a class. So what are you learning this month? This is definitely a month to learn. If you're gonna be taking a class, you've got this new adventure, this is definitely more of a learning card. And yeah, if you feel that sharpness, let's just go back to having um, a little bit more of a playful attitude. It says here, inside the tiny hummingbird resides an endless well of energy and positivity. The hummingbird secret is that it has learned where to gather nectar and it returns to those sources daily for nourishment and rejuvenation. So yeah, just taking time to rejuvenate. If you've been a little busy, if you feel a little tired, feel a little exhaustion, staying positive, rejuvenating yourself, knowing that you're lovable and you deserve love, even if you are doing more of the single thing, I feel like that's going to be a good thing for you this month. 
Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining me for these fun readings for July Love. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will be back soon for the full moon and Capricorn reading here later this month. Please subscribe to my channel for more Tantra and Tarot.